very, very cool for for Steven Yeager to take down in the same group as Scotty Scheffler and and take him down. Now I'm totally with you, Patrick. Scotty gave him all the bones. I mean, countless bones in this tournament. <laughs> I don't even know how to say that. A bag of bones <laughs> gave him every opportunity. Um, but Steven Yeager was, he met business today. He came out of the gate with the game face on. I uh, hit made a sweet birdie at four after the, after the birdie at five um, answered the bell after making bogey at seven with, birdies at eight and nine the shot at nine was just awesome and on the back nine he played some really smart golf he, he didn't make any any bogeys didn't make any birdies either uh, but he was he was rock solid he looked confident he looked like he it looked like he felt like he belongs which i i thought was really impressive a, a really impressive demeanor and when everything is when it's chaos all around him steven yeager wasn't going anywhere uh, and and he he put up a number that was hard to beat, and apparently it was too much for Scotty Scheffler. The six-time winner on the Corn Ferry Tour is now a winner on the PGA Tour. It was a Sunday, sixty-seven, three under, four under on the front nine. No, I lied. Three under on the front nine, and as Greg mentioned, Patrick, nine straight pars to get this thing done. It includes uh, yanking one way left on 16, the par five and having to punch it out and then uh, make a three from 107 yards away. It was all business. He had just a perfect demeanor until the second that putt slid by on, on 18. And then you finally saw an ounce of emotion from Steven Yeager. And he was uh, quite chatty and quite happy. I'm happy for him. Yeah, I'm happy for him too. And uh, the biggest part of that one was probably number 13, Scheffler in there tight, around 11 feet. Jaeger uh, out of the rough, hits his long, faces like a 20-ish footer for par, knocks it in. Seemed like that easily could have been a two-shot swing in this golf tournament. It's very different, but they walk off that hole with the same score. And I'm always... Uh, appreciative i guess i'm not even sure if that's the correct word but uh i, I love when guys kind of see a deficiency in their game and they do something about it and for steven yeager he was just not a good driver of the golf ball he was short off the tee and he was inaccurate off the tee and we saw him this week he ranked i mean fourth in driving distance today 12th overall uh his average drive was 313 it was 325 today and it's a lot of hard work and it, it kind of you have to look yourself in the mirror to admit you have a deficiency in your game when let's be honest most of these guys on the pga tour are delusional you you think you're the best player in the world most of the time uh so it, it's really cool to see someone like him who found so much success on the corn Ferry tour i think the experience at the farmer's insurance open did a lot for him this week you look at the leaderboard it was i mean they're pretty similar to leaderboards with Dietrich up there uh, fee now as well and so I i'm real happy for him and i have to get a shout out to the uh the co-op frozen rose in charleston south carolina hopefully it's free for the rest of the week i'm not too sure i'm pretty sure the owner lives around the block from me i might go uh to knock on his door to leave him leave him some chocolates or something they have a, a gaudy bronco with the co-op logo on it that's always parked outside so have to get a shout out to them uh, since uh, they got some good airtime today. Uh, there's also one in Vegas. There's one in Resorts World. So I don't know how many locations there are. Of the Whoa. Company. There is one in, so it's actually pretty cool. So it's in Resorts World. It's right by the entrance to the Hilton. And so there's a front door to it, but the back door opens up to the poker room. So you can actually like, it, it almost like services the poker room as a frosé slash eatery. And then also serves like hotel guests as well. It's a very interesting little thing. Huh. Yeah, it's uh it's on Sullivan's Island here in Charleston, which is uh kind of one of the beach towns. So uh interesting. I know Keith Mitchell is sponsored by them as well. So I'm wondering if there's some connection back to the Baylor school or whatever ah. back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like they have we'll just give them some more ads here. So they've got yeah. um so Las Vegas, Sullivan's Island, as you mentioned, Isle of Palms. Yeah, that's South Carolina as well. Okay. Or Charleston. 
Uh, e- Edmonds Oast Brewing Company, downtown Charleston. Uh, yeah, uh, I-, I wouldn't really go there, but it's it's there. No problem. <laughs> uh, Kiowa Island, um, yeah. Nashville, and Chattanooga, Charlotte, and Nexton, which is uh, also, I guess, in South Carolina. So they've got what's that? Eight that I just named, something like that. Yeah, and four of them mm. in the Charleston area. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Well, I uh, I have some Jaeger stats. Please throw them out. This is what you were just talking about, Patrick. Uh, 2018, 2019. In 2018, his club head speed is 113 miles an hour. He's 106 in strokes gain off the tee. In 19, 114 club head speed, 151st strokes gain off the tee. Barely play it in 20 and 21. So in 22, 114 miles an hour club head speed, 184th in strokes gain off the tee. 2023, last year, 116 in club head speed, 39th strokes gain off the tee. Now up to 118.65, 24th in strokes gain off the tee entering this event. That's uh, about four miles an hour, five miles an hour really impressive improvement and all of a sudden you're up there with you're you're keeping up with scotty scheffler you're in the same neighborhood and and that's an area of weakness that is no longer preventing you from contending preventing you from winning it's it's really cool yeah and greg we we talk about this a lot on mondays i mean he has just been he's been so consistently good and now we're now we're getting the fruits of this labor that he has put in with this victory. Yeah. It, the, um, the old line, what's the win equity? Like, that was <laughs> yeah. a big question with him early in the year. We asked it a lot. We and found it, because it didn't seem like because of this improvement off the tee, there wasn't really a lever to pull like Tony fee. Now very clear. There's a, there's one lever to pull Scotty Scheffler. There was one lever to pull. And you pull that lever and the floodgates open. With Jaeger, he did everything so well. There it was kind of hard to figure out what needs to improve to to cross the finish line. And kind of turns out nothing did. He just had to keep playing. Uh, perhaps it's something in his mind, believing in it, something along those lines. Because all of a sudden you have two top three finishes this year and now a win. Uh, and that's a that's a huge difference from what we saw all of last year and and early this year. I thought you were, did I cut you off earlier, Patrick? Did you want to jump in on something? Uh, I don't think so. I will say not only was he keeping up with Scotty, though, he, he was blowing it past him. Yeah. He was, he, he, he was, he was hitting second into every green. It was always Scotty first. It's a good point. The co-op has a sandwich on their menu, fresh house-made egg salad sprouts served on toasted wheat. It is called the master's which is probably a copyright issue. And that is exactly where Steven Yeager is headed. So congratulations, Steven Yeager. First PGA Tour victory and going to tee it up in Augusta National in two weeks. 